here talking all things NWSL with all of you and welcome to the 2020 Verizon Community Shield winners panel. I'm your moderator, Marissa Pilla, and tonight I'll be sitting down with representatives from each of the top three finishing teams from the 2020 fall series. Each of these teams received a grant from Verizon for their respective community partners. So Without further ado, the people you're here to see representing the third placed Washington Spirit who secured $10,000 for DC scores. We have defender Paige Nielsen. Hey. <laughs> From second place, Houston Dash winning $15,000 for the Houston area NAACP. We have goalkeeper Jane Campbell. Hey everybody. And from the first place, Portland Thorns and winners of $25,000 for Mimi's Fresh Cheese, we have forward Simone Charlie. Hey guys. So thank you all for being here with us tonight and being with the fans who are very excited to hear from you. And before we really get into all of the details of this 2020 season, because it was pretty unique to say the least. Um, I'd like to hear from all of you about your community partners and what it meant to give these grants to these amazing companies. So starting with Simone, how meaningful was it to know that you secured such a huge grant for Mimi's Fresh Teas? Yeah, that was so exciting for us. I think, you know, with the Thorns, the community is something that's so important to us and a part of our identity. So being able to finally have an opportunity to give back to a community that supports us so much was definitely something special. And especially for it to be Mimi's Fresh Teas, that was very exciting. We just, we love what they stand for. Um, you know, amidst everything going on in society, you know, they've worked really hard to, to keep the race conversations going, which I think is something that's so important and that needs to continue. And that's part of the reason why we picked them because of the amazing work that they're doing in our community. And we just wanted to support them any way that we could. So to be able to give them that money was such an amazing experience. And I'm so excited to see the amazing things they're gonna do. And it's incredible you're able to help them continue uh, spreading their important message that we saw really throughout the, the NWSL season this year and with all the players taking initiatives too. So it's such a great business that you were able to help out and, and Jane for your team to help out the area Houston area and NAACP why was that so important for Houston yeah I think kind of like Simone said amongst you know amidst the whole year um, I think the whole world kind of hit a big learning curve and um, you know being able to go to George Floyd George Floyd's march and be a part of that and say listen like we're just done with it and this is so unacceptable and it's been unacceptable and um, we haven't really you know, stepped up like we should have. So I think knowing um, with the Verizon Community Shield that we were able to donate some money or we were going to have the chance to play for that, I think our team wanted to just go directly into a grassroots organization. Um, I think a lot of us didn't know much and then others knew a ton. And so we were kind of trying to find a way to bridge the gap. And we felt the NAACP in Houston covered everything you could think of and answered so many questions for us. And it was very simple for us to understand. And it's it's pretty simple for everybody to understand really. So for us, the NAACP went right down to the root of everything and something as simple as voter rights and voting registration. And um, that's a huge topic obviously coming up right now. And um, something so simple as equality in the workplace and how can we affect that just by dialogue? Um, I think that is a huge conversation that should continue and also we all need to learn about how we can make the work workplace more equal and safer and um, just more enjoyable for everybody. Um, whether you're black, white, Mexican, boy, girl, you name it, I think that was a huge, huge part for us. So the NAACP for us was a great organization and we're super, super honored and proud to be able to give them some money. That's incredible you're able to help further their initiatives because it's an organization that's been around for so long, doing so much good for so many different communities. And I'm sure the Houston area and NAACP is very grateful for how well your team played in that fall series. And Paige, third place, you also secured $10,000 for your organization, DC Scores. What was it about that organization that really struck home with your team? Um, we have worked with DC Scores really closely in the past. And me specifically, I've seen what they've done um, and inspired kids to actually like have opportunities and have dreams that may not have had those opportunities. Um, they provide opportunities for kids all around DC, no matter their background. 
and even amidst this pandemic they've been able to do virtual soccer sessions virtual poetry slams and um i've really seen these kids thrive in an environment where um it could be really hard to do so and this organization was a no-brainer for us they're amazing they're incredible and i'm really happy and lucky to provide them with this opportunity with the Verizon Community Shield. Um, they're gonna do a lot with it and I'm excited to see where they go from there. Yeah, now more than ever, it's so important to be able to provide opportunities because normalcy is really have, has gone out the window, you know, for the last 10 months or so, it feels like. Um, so to be able to still provide opportunities to kids who want them and not necessarily always have them at their fingertips, it's, guys, you've picked such great organizations. And it's so nice, too, that Verizon was able to do this for community partner small businesses across the country, because we've known now's really a time that a lot of small businesses or organizations have been struggling. So Congrats to you guys for being able to step up for your community partners and, and thanks for Verizon to be able to make a bright spot, one of many in this NWSL season. So transitioning to the season as a whole, I think um, it's easy to say it's looked very different from years past of action starting late in June out in Utah with the month long challenge cup. And I, I wanted to start, this is a, really a question for all of you. So feel free to jump in, but from a mental and physical standpoint, how much of a test was the Challenge Cup? Um, who wants to go? <laughs> I, I can go first with this one. Um, mentally and physical challenge. Um, at first we were all, I think some of us were split. It was like, okay, we're in a pandemic. Should we be doing this? Um, so mentally it was hard for some of us. And then some of us were dying to play some games. So we were really excited about the opportunity um, just to get some games in and do what we love. And it wasn't until we were all in those ho hotels in Utah where we had to get tested every day and we were just in our rooms for six weeks. It was, um, it was definitely a challenge. It was an opportunity to get close with our team, that's for sure. <laughs> and you saw how many um, foodies we had with so many orders to the hotel. <laughs> um, I think that was more of a mental thing. Like we had to, we had to stay sane, um, especially Crumble Cookies. Shout out to Crumble for uh, keeping our spirits high. <laughs> and, and blood sugar levels too, because those things were like insane. Seriously, I think I lost like 10 pounds after Utah. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a physical test, yeah, we we had a hard preseason right before and um, I personally felt ready. I was like, I'm fit. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. After like my third 90 minute game, um, st things started popping up. Um, I was cramping and the worst part was the air. Like I couldn't speak during the games and everyone was like, open your mouth. I'm like, I'm trying. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Um, I swear I'm in shape, but I just couldn't breathe. The air was so dry. So um, it was definitely a challenge, but um, I think we can all say that we really enjoyed it and we really appreciate everyone that made it happen. And we all got out coronavirus free. So yeah, I think that was the biggest bright spot. Not only did were you guys the first American team sport to get back to, to playing here in the States. Um, you did it without any positive cases. So, I mean, that's another little pat on the back for the NWSL this season. Simone, what about you in, in Portland? How, what kind of experience was it for you? Yeah, it, definitely agree with Paige. It was like a challenge on many different uh, parts. I would say like even just obviously the physical part, um, having so many games back to back to back, you just kind of trying to figure out how to get, how to be rested and ready for the game, but then also maintaining fitness and then not to mention the altitude. It's just like so <laughs> many different factors, um, but also just the mental part of it. Um, you know, being in a hotel and for a month, your life is literally hotel training, hotel training, and that's like pretty much it. And so it was a cool opportunity to be able to bond with your teammates because that's literally all you have. Like you couldn't, there was no contact with other teams or anything like that. 
Um, so I, I definitely enjoyed that, being able to bond with everyone and spend time together. Um, but it was definitely challenging, I would say, but in a good way, I think we grew, it forced you to grow, um, but very grateful for the people that made it happen. Cause I know there were just so many different details, um, whether it's cleaning everything, um, making sure everyone, everything is scheduled and you're at the training facility at a certain time or tested at a certain time or allowed in a certain area at a certain time. I know that that it was, it was pretty challenging to put all of that together. So very grateful for everyone who, who worked on that. Yeah, logistics were a huge thing for that whole month. I'm so glad I wasn't in charge of organizing anything because it seems yeah. super stressful. Jane, from your perspective, you're somebody who has so much experience in this league. Where do you rank this in terms of um, tests that you've, you've reached throughout your career? Yeah, you know, I'm the only goalkeeper on the screen. So um, physically, I didn't get to run as much as you guys. So um, I can't imagine what that was like playing all those games back to back. Um, so shout out to you guys for doing that. But um, yeah, I thought it was a huge challenge. I mean, in preseason, you know, we were all ready to go. And then we got a call on like a Friday night at 1030, like, hey, no showing up facilities for who knows how long. And it was kind of just like this huge unknown. And I think that hit us pretty hard. Um, I think we did a pretty good job in, in that time of, you know, doing all these forced Zoom calls, which we all hated at the time. But I think looking back, it actually really helped us kind of just stay in contact and see each other's faces and, you know, playing team bingo, like no one wanted to do that in the moment. <laughs> but I think looking back, you know, that probably helped us a bit. And then um, kind of like both like Paige and Simone have said, you know, all we really had was each other in the hotel. I mean, you couldn't escape anyone and you couldn't really escape the fact that we were in this tournament. So um, we had like an evening walk crew, you know, every night we'd go out and walk circles in the parking lot for an hour and, you know, that got old, but it was, it was something, you know, and we all got to do it together. And, you know, by day, like four, I think people were Uber Eats uh, eating stuff in and like, I was like, man, this is gonna be a long yeah. trip, but um, it was definitely a challenge. I think it was a huge, huge challenge. It was, it was so unique, you know, we had four group games, but then with the unfortunate situation with Orlando, you know, everyone was guaranteed the quarterfinal. And then, you know, then you had these elimination games. It was, it was just quite bizarre compared to our normal league play. So um, super, super thankful. We all got to be a part of it. And um, again, huge shout out to everyone who made it possible because we all were healthy and um, the tournament was a huge success. So it was super fun and super thankful as I would be a part of it. And successful in many ways for Houston, what emotions really came out when you were able to finally hoist the first trophy in club history at when everything was said and done? Yeah, I think it was great. I mean, obviously our goal coming into 2020, not knowing what was, you know, what was about to happen was our goal was to make playoffs and our goal was to win, win the whole thing. So um, obviously with a different format with a tournament, um, our goal again was to make playoffs, which was again, quite unique, right? We were all kind of gifted the playoff spot um, into the quarterfinals. And then, you know, at the end of the day, our goal was to win the tournament. So it was great. I mean, I think, you know, everyone was against us in the tournament and, you know, these two down on the screen know exactly what I'm talking about. So um, it was awesome. I mean, it was a huge success, huge win. And um, again, like, I think the biggest part is like, we were able to put on a tournament, the first sports league in the US and everyone came out healthy. I think that's a huge, huge success. And Paige, we actually have our first uh, fan question and somebody wants to know in hindsight, what's the one thing you would change about uh, the bubble, the bubble experience that you had? Oh, gosh. And Simone, start thinking because you have to answer after. <laughs> <laughs> um, better Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, the hotel yes. is really bad. <laughs> Wi-Fi. So I think I spent hours just trying to like reconnect and connect and reconnect. And I didn't bring enough books. I should have Amazon Prime. So I was like, shoot, what do I do? Yeah. Watching like your Netflix slowly die was like the, the it was your one thing of solitude on your off day. And when it wouldn't, but like when it was just buffering, it was terrible. Simone, do you have another one? Uh, I would just second the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi. <laughs> that was definitely challenging. Just like yeah. trying to catch all your shows and like, I feel like I relied heavily on my computer for entertainment. And so <laughs> sometimes it was just a paperweight there <laughs> because everything just has Good to play. buffer. Right. Yeah. So I just got in the habit of like, pause, like whatever show I want to watch, you just pause it, go downstairs, do <laughs> Norma Tech, recovery, all of that. And then 
hopefully by the time you come back it will be loaded or at least buffered a little more so yeah that's like early 2000s internet too that's like <laughs> what you had to do with the dial up <laughs> like, for it to like screech and be done but also i'm glad that all of you had mentioned uber eats knowing i wasn't the only one like just spending an insane amount of money with uber <laughs> so i'm glad i wasn't alone yes yeah it was a lot um also, we um, some fans want to know uh, uh, how are all of you feeling about the Louisville ex expansion draft? Jane, sure, I'll take this one. Um, <laughs> I think it's I think it's great. I think um, you know it's coming quickly the expansion draft, and I think it. Um, you know, nerves are high, and um, I'm sure people are feeling anxious about it. But I think at the end of the day knowing that the league's growing and um, Louisville, as far from what I've seen, which is obviously an outside view, it seems super, super sturdy and they're ready to go. And I think having them in the 2021 season will be super exciting and, um, you know, hope they don't have a too good of a team, but I think, <laughs> I think they've got an amazing organization right now and um, I'm excited to see what they bring uh, to the table. And I think it's, it's just great that the league gets to keep growing and, you know, a few more years from now, we'll have more teams as well. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, you wish them well enough. Like, not really good. <laughs> well enough. Right. He's like, yeah, I you, get know, it. you know, no more than like fifth or fourth. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's generous. <laughs> and Paige, you know, something that always came up when people talked about Washington this year was the youth on the team. That was the youngest team. Okay. There's so many young players. What advantage do you think that had for your team um, being able to always rise to the occasion? Yeah, I mean, we had no expectations. Um, <laughs> and so that helps. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does help. So like anything you do, everyone's like, oh, oh, maybe they have a chance, right? Um, however, we want to change that narrative. We want to be expected to do well. And I think we're heading in that direction. Um, I think we're kind of tired of the, the youth thing, even though we are pretty young. And um, hope, hopefully we see some leaders rise on our team to make it more mature and hopefully get more results. Um, but yeah, our rookie of the year, Ashley Sanchez was a rock star. She's a beast. And we had a couple of other young players shine and this tournament actually was a great opportunity for, for people to grow. So super excited to where we're going to go. Um, and every day we get older. So right. that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> that's a true statement. <laughs> and you know, it isn't always a bad thing. It's not always, you know, a negative because a lot of coaches have said like younger players, they play with such a fearlessness. And I think Ashley Sanchez is such a great example of that, the way she plays and um, how she's able to just really um, demand attention on the field. So, I mean, Washington just turned out to be, you guys are such an exciting team to watch and even further develop, like you said, in 2021 and to your point there was opportunity for players to get more minutes and Simone that's really your uh, story of the season too because between the challenge cup and the fall series you you set a new personal record for most minutes played um, in your career 574 what was your approach to making the most of that opportunity in those game minutes which are invaluable yeah it was definitely a cool opportunity just to kind of continue to build off of the work we've been putting in. Um, just going through preseason, well, a couple of preseasons, I feel like, um, the pre-Challenge Cup one, I feel like this year on the Thorns, we had a lot of new faces and a lot of new people. And so we had to kind of build that team chemistry and figure out um, what it looks like working together on the field. And I felt like in the fall series, that's kind of when you kind of saw the culmination of that with the relationships beginning to develop and people kind of figuring out how other people play. And so I think with the team chemistry developing has definitely was something that was helpful for me. And it was great being able to build off of the, the multiple preseasons <laughs> that we had. Uh, it was a cool opportunity. Well, yeah, you talked about how the team really started to click in the fall series. Not only did you finish atop the standings in the fall series, but you did so going unbeaten throughout it. Um, how did your team, I know there's always that saying a thorn soccer. How did you guys get back to realizing playing thorn soccer? Yeah, I think after the Challenge Cup, we just kind of had to regroup a little bit and 
uh, reestablish what our identity is. And so I think kind of like I was saying, we have a lot of new faces and trying to establish who we want to be and what Thorn soccer looks like. It's going to look different year to year, especially when you have new people and having to figure out um, what that chemistry is going to look like on the field. And so I think for us, just having more time to be able to gel together and, you know, in the Challenge Cup, spending a lot of time together and getting to know people both on and off the field, I think um, you just get to see that start to come together. And so I think just with time, that's something that just developed for us and we started to see it on the field. No, definitely. I've, the fall series was such a fun time to watch Portland really hit its stride um, with Sinclair, you know, doing her thing, scoring so many goals and and really just being an exciting team again. And, and Jane, for Houston, it really was an opportunity to follow up what you did, what your team was able to do in the summer. How important was it to show that the Challenge Cup wasn't an isolated series of success? Yeah, I think that was huge for us. I mean, um, you know, winning the Challenge Cup, I think, caught everybody by surprise um, on the outside. So for us, uh, entering the fall series, um, it was an interesting dynamic. We didn't really know exactly what we wanted to do with the four games. And I, I think to start, many of us didn't really know what the fall series meant. But um, in our group, our coach was like, listen, we've got to – we have to win all four and make sure everybody realizes this wasn't just a fluke. and um, I thought I thought all four games were great, and I think a huge point is that this year, so many people, you know, maybe in a, in a different year may have not gotten some minutes, and I think in the fall series, especially some people really shined, and I think people on our team were able to get some minutes who um, maybe they weren't expecting to get minutes, and I think that was a huge growth for us just as a team, and, um, you know, we ended up putting a pretty good picture together during the fall series and a couple bad moments, but other than that, I think we're really pleased with um, how the fall series went and uh, how the team played in general. So I think for us, you know, having kind of a shortened season with really way few games leading into 2021, we're hoping, knock on wood, everything goes smooth, that we can continue this and continue it for a full season and, you know, for 24 games or however many games we get, that's kind of the goal going forward with Houston. Right. This year was very blocked off. Like you had your preseason told to stop and then you had to restart and restart and restart again. So a little more fluidity next year, hopefully in everybody, for everybody's sake in, in life and in soccer, hopefully is, is on our way. So another fan question came in. Um, I'll, I'll throw this one to Paige for like first. They want to know, um, what do y'all think about these rivalries developing in NWSL? <laughs> I'm from Philadelphia. I don't say y'all very well. So I really just wanted to do it justice. <laughs> but your thoughts on the rivalries within the league? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> there we go. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Right. Um, the rivalries. That's that's interesting. I think they're they're changing a lot, and it obviously makes it super fun. Um, I think we all kind of like don't like certain teams because they're the powerhouses, and we're like, you know what? You're not that good. Like we'll show you. <laughs> And, um, and it's funny because like all of our teams can be anyone on any day. And um, I think that's what makes this league so fun. And um, obviously like most of us are friends off the field, but yeah, when it's on the field, it's like, we're super competitive and it makes it super fun. Um, no one wants to get beat and everyone wants to be the best. That's why. Right. We're, so <laughs> That's why you all are professional athletes. That's kind of what got you guys here, right? And it makes it fun when the fans engage in it too. I'm actually like a troll in the NW supporters <laughs> group, I swear. Um, the burner account page, is that what you're telling us? <laughs> and they go at it with the different teams. Like I hate this team and I'm just reading all the comments like this is hilarious, but it makes it, it makes it super fun. And I hope it helps the league actually grow. Yeah, that's a rabbit hole. I'm sure that's very interesting to dive down when you have some free time. <laughs> Um, Simone, your team's part of one of the best rivalries in the league. What is it like to have such a, a well-known rival in rain? Yeah, the good old Cascadia rivalry. <laughs> um, it's pretty cool. I think just coming here um, when I first got here, just talking to Sinky about it because she grew up um, all about this rivalry and what it stands for and represents for the community. And they always like joke about how the most important thing for the season, it's like, 
okay, yeah, you want to win this, you want to win a championship, but you want to really be Ray. <laughs> like that's like what's actually important. Number one and number two, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And so, um, but that, I feel like that's what makes it fun. Um, just giving you something else to play for and realizing that, you know, it's not just important to you, but it's important to the community. And there's so much history behind the rivalry. And so you can just feel it when you're out there on the field. Um, it's always a physical battle on both sides, but you know, that's what makes it interesting and that's what makes it good. So it's definitely, it's fun. Jane, I know you want to win every game and every win feels good, but is there a win that feels even better against a specific team? Yeah, I was just about to ask. I mean, I don't really know who our rival <laughs> is. I don't know if we have um, uh, a distinguished one yet. I think the fans, like Paige was saying, it's really up to the fans to decide that sometimes. <laughs> and I think that's great. But um, I don't know. Every time we play Orlando, everyone in the locker room just like sees red and we're ready to go. And I don't know what it is. I mean, every I think if you look back at all of our games we've played, there's got to be like 50% of games get a red card. So on either side, you know, so I'm just like at this rate, we might as well just claim that that's our rival and, you know, press on with it. But um, playing everyone is great. Like Paige said, taking down the big dogs is also, uh, you know, kind of like in the back of our minds, like that's the goal at the end of the year to knock those people off. So um, every game's great, but Orlando definitely is, uh, brings out some anger. <laughs> yeah, I have to go back and now I'm going to check all the, the yellow and red cards that were given out between you two over the last couple of years. So that's my homework. Um, but also people want to know, talked a lot about team building and, and stuff like that, that was almost forced because you were living in such close quarters. Did any of you find out anything interesting about one of your teammates that maybe you didn't know, but because you were living with them so much and in close quarters that you were like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> anything? Uh, I'll add um, something kind of gross. Sure, we're in for it. There's like, Oh my gosh, she's gonna hate me. <laughs> um, I had to release like someone's cyst on their back. <laughs> it wasn't a, it wasn't a, I know, terrible. This is for everyone to know, but this is like that, those are the things that happen in close quarters, <laughs> I feel like. Did she ask you or did you volunteer? Like, hey, let me get that for you. Was she like, can you do me a solid? And... I was asked, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a good friend yeah guys Simone Jane did you have any medical experience at all in the challenge cup um I did not and I'm glad I didn't um uh, I was room or not roommates but I was across the hall with um our rookie Bridget and I learned through her food ordering that she only likes popcorn from Ocean City, Maryland. It's like a big old bucket. Oh. I swear she ate it in one day. I was super impressed. I was like, dang, you know, I, How did she a great get summer, but I don't know. You know, I didn't ask questions. I was like, that seems great. And it tastes, it looks like it tastes great. So good for you. <laughs> but she was like, yeah, I'll only have that popcorn from Ocean City. So I was like, great. So definitely, <laughs> definitely saw some crazy food orders for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Simone, anything? I second that on the crazy food orders for sure. Um, I learned that Kling is a huge Fleetwood Mac fan. We had a, there was like, right when you walk out of the elevator, there's like a huge window. And we used to call it, we called it the Sunset Terrace. Oh, and we would just pull up chairs <laughs> and, and just watch the sunset every night and then just play card games. And so there's like a group of like, five or six of us every day and we'd like meet up at Sunset Terrace like right before sunset and then play card games and Kling would always be playing Fleetwood Mac and so yeah. I also heard she was super competitive with card games. Yes <laughs> <laughs> it is personal <laughs> it's oh, wow. so serious. I'm like not surprised but a little surprised. <laughs> yes blood was shed on Sunset Terrace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so dramatic too. Sunset Terrace. Um, uh, oh, this question is for Paige coming in from one of our fans. How excited are you that Bledsoe got a training camp call up? I'm stoked. I mean, I think she's awesome. I think she's one of the best. And I think Jane is too. 
um I think yeah she she's she works every day she actually just came back from um Colorado yesterday and she came to training today like she got back super late um it was pouring rain today and she goes we only have like seven days left together I'm here to get better I'm here to be with you guys and that's her mentality every single day and she's worked for it. she deserves she deserves it yeah and I hope that she gets more opportunities um yeah we're buds so I'm excited for her that's awesome and Jane you just came back last night and we, we were talking about how it was snowing out in Colorado. But besides that, how was the national camp experience? Because it was the first time you guys were be able to get together in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aubrey crushed it. And I hope she gets all the success she deserves because she's had a phenomenal couple of years. So um, it was fun being in camp with her, actually. I've never I don't I think we've maybe been in like one training camp together when we were like, you know, 18 or 19. So it was cool. You know, fast forward everything. Um, we're all pros now and we can all be together but camp was great um, there were definitely some new faces and um, some veterans as well so it was a good mix um, definitely unique being kind of in our own bubble but not really in a bubble but um, yeah the cold the cold was very cold I mean I'm not you know DC weather that's cold you know so I don't know um, what that's like up there with you Paige but Colorado was cold for me so um, it was great it was beautiful beautiful hotel um, everyone did amazing and everyone was healthy so um, it was a great camp and really fun to be back together just after this whole year it's been great that they were able to put it on. No it was good to see even on social media just the team back together and seeing all that um, a little sense of normalcy coming back maybe and news coming out of Portland too Crystal Dunn is now a member of the Portland Thorns. Simone, how does it feel to know that you're going to have her as a teammate? Yeah, it was very exciting news. Um, you know, Crystal every, is a phenomenal player. I'm pretty sure everyone knows that. And so <laughs> we were just like super excited to have her. Um, even personally, I was very excited. She was definitely a player that I looked up to growing up. I remember my mom used to send me just like any article that like had her name in it. <laughs> <laughs> like my mom used to email them to me and so like the little fangirl in me came out <laughs> I was like oh my gosh like on the field with Crystal Dunn <laughs> and so yeah we're just super excited and get to learn from one of the best players so we're really excited. That's always a question I have for for all of you really because this league is filled with so many players um, that everybody has been able to look up to for such a long time. Is it hard when you're maybe a new player or a young player and you see a person that you've admired on the field and tried to emulate and then you realize like we're colleagues now how hard is that transition to, to kind of wrap your head around anyone I, I can go first <laughs> um mine kind of happened in college I uh, walked on to North Carolina and when I was a freshman I had Crystal Dunn on the field and I had looked up to her and watched her before I got there in Kalia Ojai and I was nowhere near their talent when I came in and so when I saw like them to my left and right I'm like holy crap <laughs> like I'm here it's either I choose to work my butt off to get even <laughs> close to their level or um or just kind of stay in the sidelines and it's not like it's not like you I you think of them as like a celebrity right you always just compare yourself I think especially because you want to be <laughs> I don't know you want to be the just like them and so every single day they give you like reasons to work hard and like different things that you can work on and that's what I really appreciated it, it it motivated me to become better um so I really love that aspect of it and and it happens every day now you know yeah. you have players maybe better than you at some things and you're like this is that's what I want to be like how can I do that right so, yeah Jane had you ever had that experience where you had to kind of center yourself of like oh my gosh that's so and so and I'm playing alongside of her and and kind of handle that yeah, I think in my early stages of Houston, we had a, a few people come in and out through the group. And I think when Carly was with us, um, she came back from Man City, I think. And that's when we crossed paths in Houston. And um, our team was very different then than it is now and um, completely different staff. But she was kind of like the general on the field and almost like ran the team off it. And um, I think even though we obviously play very different positions, I think she's 
you know, been the best in the world for some time for a reason. And I think getting to know kind of her work ethic and her thought process behind what she does in training, why she does it in training, why she doesn't do something, um, kind of just asking her all the whys about her success. I think that was a really huge, huge learning tool for me. And um, thankfully, I formed a really good relationship with her. So I can call her now. But um, I think then it was quite interesting just being so young in the league and so young with Houston and then having this person who wasn't our coach, but literally ran the team and did it so sophisticated. So um, I was super pumped about that and uh, super, super grateful for that time. Well, what a person too to, to learn off of when you're young too, someone who very much leads by example and, and sets a tone very early on and kind of going back to the season as a whole, looking back at everything. Um, we'll start with Simone, but um, when you kind of look back at everything, what are you most proud of either from an individual team or league standpoint that has come out of the season? Uh, I would just say I'm proud of our resilience through the season. I think it's just been a lot of up and downs and just so much up in the air, um, not just on the field, but I think off of the field too. There's just been a lot going on in society that you know, we've had to press through and talk through and confront as a team. And we've had to have a lot of tough conversations, um, not just about soccer, but about what's going on in the U.S. and um, social justice and things like that. And I think for us to be able to come together through that and um, be united on the field and be united in our actions on and off the field is something that I'm proud of. And I think just being able to watch how we were able to grow through the season and develop um, as players and as people um, has just as something that I'm proud of for us this year. For sure. I think, you know, when there's always tough situations, you can either grow from them or you can run from them. And it seems like everybody really took this opportunity to grow. So Jane, from your experience with the team, is there anything, like I said, on an individual or team or even a league level that you think you're going to really kind of look back and be like, that's, that's my biggest takeaway. Yeah, I think kind of, you know, Simone hit it right on target. I think this year had so many question marks. And I think the fact that the league was able to put on the challenge cup was a huge, huge success. Um, I think after that ended being able to put on the fall series and having the community shield was a massive success um, because that wasn't in a bubble and for the most part everyone was healthy so I think that in itself is a huge success and I think um, you know the league in itself kind of like Simone talked about having um, issues off the field and you know bringing essentially a quality to light that we needed to do you know immediately I think the league set the standard for all leagues in the U.S. and I think um it's up to us to put that out there and show that, hey, listen, like we did it and we're still doing it. And we were kind of the forefront of this, you know, having the bubble, being successful, being healthy, and then also raising awareness to essentially have equality through everywhere, you know? And um, I think that was, that's something our team will for sure look back on and be like, listen, like this was us, this is our league. And you know, such a strong group of women that we all did it together, even though we were on respective teams and we all did it a bit different. I think at the end of the day, our message is huge. And I think that'll, that'll carry on for, you know, years to come. Yeah, for sure. There's such a sense of unity within this league on, on many different things. And that was very evident challenge cup fall series through it all Paige, anything to add? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say when Simone was talking, it gave me the chills because we do have a lot of young players and they move to a city that they don't know and um, they couldn't see anyone. They were like stuck and you could really see their growth um, with all the social injustice and, and all the tough conversations we had. So off the field, like, yeah, I'm so proud of them. But I just wanted to add on the field stuff for maybe eight months, we couldn't really find a, a field. Um, we would like, we'd get kicked off the fields. We would, um, we, I made my own gym at my place. Our faces were in the mud lifting, like when rain was coming down and we're like, when are we gonna have games? What are we doing this for? And I'm so like, I'm getting teary eyed thinking about it because it, it had been a long year. And we have like really young girls and they're like, listen, we're in this, we're gonna do whatever, like you guys say, the leaders say, and we're gonna get better. 
and not not just as soccer players but as people so I'm really proud of them yeah it's got to be so hard putting in I mean what you guys do on a normal basis is hard and it's grueling and you guys put a lot of work into it physically mentally all of that but then at a point where you didn't know what exactly you were doing it for that just shows the mental strength of you know the players in this league because it's easy not easy but it's easier to do the work when you know what the end goal is i'm getting ready for the season but at one point you didn't really know what you were getting ready for if anything at all um so the fortitude is really commendable from all of you and all of your teams and everyone represented in the league because it's easy to do it when you know what you're doing it for, if that makes sense. Um, so that's really, thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, it's been just crazy to see all the ups and downs and like the stop start rhythm of the year. It, it had to be hard to handle for all of you. Um, but when all of your teams got a second to really debrief, Paige, I know your team is still training, um, but what did your coaches say about this season? Cause you all have very um, fun uh, animated coaches at some points. Um, and I'd love to hear <laughs> their perspectives of what they shared when they were able to pull back and, and kind of look at things from a broader perspective. Oh, first, I haven't gone first yet. Um, <laughs> uh, James is, was great. And uh, you know, in the challenge cup, I'll give away his secret. He made us meditate every team meeting for like five minutes. And he was like, we're going to do it. You know, you guys are all going to relax because you're all uptight. And um, I was like, are you projecting something or, you know, whatever, but we all did it. And uh, it was fun. It was cool. But uh, I think when we returned back from um, our little break and we're getting ready for the fall series, you know, he was like, I'm glad he admitted to himself. He was like, you know, that was way harder than any of us, I think, imagined. And I think it was really hard for him as well. And and our staff, you know, they all have families or are married and um, it was hard for them. And I think it was nice for them to finally admit like, hey, they're relating to us a bit, you know, like we all have dogs or families back home that we all missed. And, um, you know, it was, it was nice of them to say like, hey, you know, we're human too kind of thing. So um, James was pumped, but um, coming into the fall series, he was kind of over the challenge cup and he was like, you know, we got to keep the ball rolling. So um, that's, that's his attitude now. And um, it's nice that we were able to train with them, I think until, you know, two weeks from now or something in November. So um, it's great. And I think a lot of the girls are either taking time to rest or, or continue to train until um, mid November rolls around. So um, he's on it and uh, he's there for us, which is great. That's awesome. Yeah. I heard about the meditating and we were wondering like how that went over for the team, but that's, you know, it, it helps kind of like uh make your focus a little more clear, clear and clarity is always a good thing. I'm sure before you go into a, a game too. Yeah. It's a, it's not for everybody, but like, you know, nothing is. So I'm glad right. everyone at least got to try it. So. Yeah. And Simone, not about meditating, but what, what is Mark said? Wait, can you get, okay. Sorry. Good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I think we're, we're going into the fall series. We were just kind of thinking about, um, you know, trying to figure out how to stay motivated for the games. And I think for us, the thing that we thought about was just the next season, you know, having these games in the fall series is a great way to continue to develop and remind us of what we're striving for for next season and continue to grow. And so I think um, after the Challenge Cup there, it was kind of just back to the drawing board. It's like, okay, what worked for us? What didn't? Um, what do we need to work on and just kind of nail down how we can grow as a team and then using the fall series as a way to kind of put that into action and have that ability to see what works and what doesn't work and just fully commit to a process and um, just keep in mind that the goals that we strive for for next season. So I think for us, it was kind of using these games as a way to catapult us into the goals that we have for the following season. Yeah, that's great. I know there's a, in Portland, there's always a plan ahead and kind of like setting the building blocks for everything. And I'm sure that's true for every team. And Paige, what about, um, what about what's going on in Washington? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> pushing our faces on the dirt. Um, no, but I, it doesn't feel like it's come to a close. Like we, our coach always laughs about putting everything in the rear view mirror, whether it's like good or bad, it's like, okay, move that aside. It's over with, here's what we're doing. So it was more of like a, we still have work to do kind of attitude. We're not finished yet. We're going to, 
like our owner always talks about this three-year plan uh, and becoming like a, a top team by three years and um I think every day we strive we strive for that and we want to start winning some games so I think a lot of us are still working hard so with postseason kind of really looming, I know there's still trainings going on, but soon all of your time essentially will be your own to do whatever you want with. Um, and I'm curious, I'm sure it's personal, but when the season is over and you have no more team responsibilities for a little bit, how do you balance taking a break from soccer and also keeping in form and keeping in touch with everything? Is there like a preferred balance percentage that you like to hit or do you like to just completely unplug from the game for a little Jane I think uh I think it varies person to person there's some people on our team who will completely unplug until like three weeks before preseason and then you know they'll run the beep test and get top three so I'm like you know kudos to you you know yeah. like <laughs> that's wicked impressive but um I think for me you know I'll take a couple weeks off and um, just not even look at a ball. And then once that two weeks is up, I'll, I'll get back to it and get back to the drawing board and, um, you know, kind of dissect the whole year and figure out, you know, what I need to nail for coming into 2021 and how I can be most successful for the team. So, um, I think it varies person to person. Um, I don't know specifically our plans, you know, when we're not allowed to train with our staff anymore, what, um, James really wants of us just yet, but um, I think everyone deserves a much needed unplug, whether that's for a day or the whole time. So I hope everyone in the league, um, staff included, get time to unplug for this off season. And what does your unplug consist of? Um, I'm, I'm down with just hanging my dogs and uh, being with them and going on walks or going to the beach. So um, kind of they, they take the charge in the off season. It's their <laughs> schedule, not mine. So. That's fair. Yeah. Paige, your ideal off season balance, what would that be? Yeah. I mean, Jane kind of nailed it. Yeah. I, uh, I was trying to jump in the trainings right after and I hit a wall. I was <laughs> like, wait, I, I'm not having fun. And I always have fun when I play soccer. Um, so I really forced myself. I even told our sports sports science guy, if you see me show up at that field, don't let me train. <laughs> um, so yeah, like as a professional, it's hard to balance because you always want to get better and it's, it's fun. It's your job. It's what you do, but there's definitely a time where you need to take a break. So I'm back training, but ideally like these next couple months, I'm going to go on vacation, ho hopefully Hi. COVID per permitting, <laughs> um, enjoy some sand volleyball and relaxing on the beach and see some family for a little bit but um in dc there's there's really good training around and and i have some good friends here so we get to train here and there and i'll probably come down to atlanta and train <laughs> at some point <laughs> with jane maybe so um yeah you're always welcome oh thanks <laughs> thanks yeah i feel like it might be i would assume it'd be hard for you know, athletes like yourselves who have always pushed yourselves that like, it's hard to tell yourself to take a break because you feel like you should be doing something. Uh, Simone, do you have any plans outside of soccer of like what you can't wait to do when you finally kind of can breathe and, and have the time now? Uh, I would say I'm mostly just excited to see my family. Um, I feel like for me, so I, I played in Australia in the off season and it was kind of crazy because I like literally as soon as I got back, like maybe a week later, that's when everything shut down. So I kind of like haven't really had time to like spend time with my family and be there and all of that. And so for me, that, that's what I'm looking forward to is just being able to see everyone. That's nice. Yeah, because your schedule has been so hectic. I'm sure you didn't know when you needed to be back in Portland or when you were able to travel and traveling now is, you know, not super easy um, anymore, but I'll go to a couple more fan questions as we wrap it up. Um, somebody wants to know, uh, it's another y'all question. Have y'all voted yet? Of course. Good to hear. Had to get that out of the way. I know people are dying to know. Um, also, uh, somebody wanted to know how hard was it, back to the bubble talk, um, to see some of your friends on opposite teams, but not be able to like interact with them or actually like say hi to them. Um, so was that difficult at all? Is 
Simone? <laughs> um, yeah, I would say we kind of got in the habit of like mastering the like where you make eye contact and then do like the little way. <laughs> like, I feel like I did a lot of those in the hotel. That's an interesting <laughs> approach to it. I <laughs> <laughs> or just FaceTiming people. Um, or yeah, it was more of you just kind of see everyone in passing or, oh, we're walking in the cafeteria and they're walking out. And then it's like, oh, I see my friend. And you're like, hi, friend. Hi, friend. It's like elementary school when you saw them like changing classes and you were like, you're required <laughs> to kind of say that. Like subtly waving so the principal doesn't get mad. Yeah. Like, hey. <laughs> I saw my friend today. They exist outside of this. Yeah. Um, no, that was definitely different I would say because it's like your friends are like so close because they're mm -hmm. in the same hotel but it's like a different floor and you're not supposed to interact and cafeterias are different you can't be in the um like the common areas at the same time and stuff like that and so yeah it was definitely different um there'd be a few times like some of my friends on different teams I'd be facetiming them and they're like in the same hotel but oh, that's weird <laughs> Can't, like see you but you hear the echo from like the <laughs> yeah exactly so it was definitely different to say the least yeah I I feel like I watched those weird interactions from afar I'm like oh that's gotta be strange <laughs> where like you see each other on the field so you would think like oh I can approach them but like that wasn't the case like you weren't able to really socialize you had to go to Sunset Terrace, which sounds really lovely. I think I might vacation there when I have the opportunity to Sunset Terrace. Um, oh, and this is, I think this might be our final fan question, but I'll start with uh, Paige. What was the best advice a coach ever gave you? Um, best advice. I'll just go with like a short story that okay. um, really motivated me. So I was 14, my club coach Marcus Culture in Nebraska was running us and I wasn't always the fittest um, in club and I couldn't make it. At halfway I stopped and I laid on the ground and he hovered over me and he goes, you'll never make it at North Carolina. And um, that was the point where I was like, wow, I really like need to get my crap together. It's I don't know if it's innate to like try and prove people wrong or prove yourself wrong, but um, I think I think that motivates a lot of people. So um, I think being like a bad cop, that's <laughs> that's not so much advice, but it definitely motivated me to get to where I am today. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other piece of advice was Anson Dorrance, North Carolina, is that. Um, that I would only make it in the league as a center back. And here I am, a center back. I started as a forward. So there you go. <laughs> piece of advice. Now, now this is your job. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, too, it sounded like that was almost like um like a come to light moment for you when your coach said that to you, like kind of flicked a switch in your brain a little bit of fitness and, and what it would take. Yeah. No, I've had series of those conversations and stuff throughout my entire career. I remember my first game in college against Virginia. Um, I played five minutes and then I got taken right out. And then my mom like went and hugged Anson after and like, did we make the wrong choice? And then he was like, no, she's gonna be all right. She has a drive and determination to make it. And, um, and yeah, so it's all about like failing and overcoming those. Yeah, you learn a little bit along the way for sure. Jane, what was the best piece of advice you ever gotten? Yeah, I have a story like pages, but I'm not going to give that coach any credit because um, he doesn't deserve it. So I'm going to hold my story. Um, I think uh, I don't know who said it because I've I've heard many coaches tell me this, but I think it's very true, especially this year, that um, you should always have fun with the game and um, you should always enjoy going to work, kind of like Paige said. So um, this year, there were countless times where I was just dreading going to training or, you know, kind of like, why are we here? What are we doing? And um, I think it was nice to reflect and just say, hey, listen, like I still have a job. We still have a job. The league is still existing. Um, there were thoughts where, you know, we didn't know the future of the league. And, you know, now thankfully looking back, you know, it's a huge success this year. So um, just being able to know that I had that security and I was about to take it for granted in some sense. And 
um, you know, going to training, being with our team and um, having the success we did it, you know, you couldn't paint a better picture for us. So for me, um, something so simple as having fun with it. And if you're not having fun with it, I think you need to reevaluate. Well, that's why you all got into what you do now, because it was fun. And to kind of keep that joy with it, I think, you know, is, is a huge key to success. Um, totally. Simone? Uh, yeah, I would say my strength coach in college, uh, one thing that he would always, I guess, kind of put things in perspective whenever we'd be doing lifts or running and stuff like that. If players tried to either cut reps or, you know, not run all the way to the line, he would just say, why are you sabotaging your progress? And I think just kind of putting it in perspective for me, of just like, oh, when you're cheating yourself or not giving 100%, you're literally sabotaging <laughs> your progress and just kind of putting that into perspective, like correlating hard work with the results that you want to attain. I think for me was definitely something that was powerful. And I even think of, I know everyone talks about, you know, it's like, oh, the growth mindset and stuff like that. Um, but I think that's something um, that has been helpful for me. Um, just like coming into the league, my story is just about, I came in and was a practice player for a year. And I think that that was something that was challenging. Um, you know, you're surrounded by so many great players. And, you know, we talked about earlier, you're literally surrounded by like people you grew up idolizing and like watching on television and stuff like that. And to come in and you're playing with them, it's kind of like, is a little bit of an imposter syndrome. Like what I'm here, <laughs> like on the field with y'all, <laughs> like that's wild, like that kind of thing. And um, just being able to understand that if you work hard enough, like you can get there and you may not be there today and you might not be there tomorrow either, but it's about consistently putting in that work every day that that's what will get you those results. And that's you, you can grow and get to that level through just consistently working hard. So I think for me, just kind of putting it into perspective, um, when you are putting work in, are you putting in work or are you sabotaging your progress? <laughs> but also realizing that um, just consistent hard work, you will grow and you will get better. And those goals are attainable. I think that's such great advice too, for anyone that's listening, because I think imposter syndrome is something that, you know, in any field, in any industry can really easily kind of eke up of like, why am I here? And, and especially when your job is so comparison based of who's on the field and maybe who's not, it's good to know that like, you can kind of refocus and just focus on yourself and what you can control in terms of your fitness and how much work you put into everything. And guys, I have to thank you so much for doing this. It was so great to talk with all of you and, and catch up again. Um, and again, I just want to, um, you know, thank Verizon for, for putting together this community shield and putting out all these grants for the uh, small businesses that you all won for your community partners and such great organizations. And have to mention um, that all the teams um, in NWSL, all their local businesses are getting a free month of blue jeans by Verizon and two months of one talk. Um, so it's great that they're supporting kind of everyone, even though you guys added a little something extra to the grants for, for all your community partners. So thank you all so much. Thank you for everybody who tuned in, who sent in your questions. That's going to do it for our Verizon Community Shield winners panel. Um, again, thank you to our partners, all the fans who joined us here tonight, but also throughout the season. If you were there for the Challenge Cup in the fall series, thank you. Thank you to our guests for being here, as well as all the players across NWSL for putting out such an exceptional product this season um, and giving us, you know, a little sense of normalcy and, and great soccer to enjoy. So we hope you enjoyed our panel discussion tonight and ladies enjoy the off season, whatever that looks like for you. Um, and we hope to talk soon. We'll see you soon. Thanks guys. Thank you.